One of the things I love about really thorough sci-fi is they think about the whole world, and you're actually, you know, you, you, you run an ice freighter, which is just kind of like a, a job you have in yeah, space. Right. Um, so uh, how do you get sucked into the, the, the what is more than the ice freighter? Yeah, it, I mean, you know, at the ice freighter, it's, it's a rough life. I mean, it's a utilitarian job. It's like being on an oil tanker or like a large fishing boat or, you know, it's like, right. it's, um, you know, Holden, Holden's a guy who is constantly running from authority. He doesn't want to be told what to do. He just doesn't want to answer to anybody. He wants to live a simple life the way he wants to live it and have everybody kind of leave him alone. And he comes across a distress call in the middle of nowhere and through this very simple altruistic act gets sucked into this conspiracy that essentially has the potential to change humanity as we know it and, uh, and to start a war, an enormous war. Um, and he becomes a kind of an inadvertent revolutionary. I love that he's a, a capable guy, but he doesn't want to put himself out there. He's kind of a reluctant hero. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's kind of, he, he is that archetype in every sense of the word. He, he's never someone, I think, who would have chosen to have been in those positions of responsibility. Um, but he is capable of it. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but in the, in the very beginnings of the series, there's a major event that happens that he kind of shoulders the responsibility and blame for even if he's not necessarily the cause of it he certainly feels the guilt and it's through that guilt that kind of pushes him to become the man he does eventually become and um, and a leader that he, I don't think he ever thought he would ever be.